This is a podcast on bioreaction engineering, and it's called COMSOL Compulsory Task 8. And the purpose is to demonstrate how to use the module transport of dilute solutes in order to solve a problem with coupled chemical reaction and diffusion. The content is example one, concentration boundaries, and I will demonstrate various steps in COMSOL, including the setup with the model wizard, how to set the geometry, how to define all the processes in transport of dil diluted species, how to mesh the model, how to study it, and how to plot the results. Afterwards, we're going to take another example, example two, with a no-flux boundary, and we're going to compare the results. The example is some kind of slab through which a substance may diffuse at the same time as it reacts. So the geometry is one-dimensional, it's one millimeter across, and there's a chemical reaction where A is consumed according to a second-order reaction where the reaction rate is minus 0 0.01 concentration squared. On the left side, the concentration of A is 1. On the right side, the concentration of A is 0. The very steps we're going to go through in COMSOL are the following. We're going to use a model with to select the space dimension. It's one-dimensional. We're going to add the physics model transport of dilute solutes and we're also going to select the study type which is stationary because this is not a dynamic system we will make a steady state model then we'll define the geometry and it's one millimeter across it's called an interval then it's time to define the various processes and conditions in dilute solutes we're going to introduce the boundary condition to the left of concentration one going to introduce the concentration boundary to the right, which is zero, the diffusion coefficient, and the chemical reaction equation. Then we're going to measure and study the model, and finally plot the results in terms of concentration across this interval, as well as the flux through it. This is what we meet when we start COMSOL. The first thing to do is to select the space dimension, which is one-dimensional. The second thing to do is to choose the appropriate physics, in this case, transport of diluted species. And finally, we should make this steady state calculation. It's called stationary. Now it's time to define the geometry. We put the cursor over geometry, right click and get the opportunity to select interval. And we'll simply select a one millimeter interval. And then we'll build this geometry. The next thing we should do is to define the various parameters. We could start defining the various concentrations. Then we right click and get the chance to select concentration. We select the left-hand border, or boundary, manually, and add the concentration, one. Then we create a new one, concentration to the right this time, select it manually, and define the concentration as zero. Now it's time to go to convection and diffusion. Well, first of all, we have no convection. We can set that right here if we want to. No convection. So then we just select diffusion. And the diffusion coefficient that's already been selected, the default value, is exactly the ones we want. Now it's time to do the final thing, and that is to introduce the chemical reaction. So we right-click get reaction and just define it to minus 0 0.01 C squared. Maybe there should be a multiplier as well. And that reaction takes place in the whole domain. Then it's time to mesh. We select finer just to make sure 
and build mesh. Having done that, it's time to study. And by default, we get the concentration plot. And as we see, the concentration is 1 at the left boundary and 0 at the right boundary. 0 right here and 1 right there. Now we can also plot the flux. We go to Result, right-click. We want to make a 1D plot. Select that, right-click. We want to make a line graph. And that line graph should cover this whole interval. We add that manually. And up here we can select that we want to do something with species C, a diffusive flux. We want to look in the X direction. Having defined the plot, we plot it. It's about 25 to the left and about 6 to the right. And here we have the results. The concentration at 1 millimeter is, of course, 0, because that is what the boundary condition says. And the flux to the left is 25, and the flux to the right is 6. Now, let's change the example. Instead of having a boundary of condition of 0, concentration in the right uh, boundary, we'll just introduce a solid wall. Then we can get no diffusion across the whole slab, but we can get diffusion into it from the left-hand side. To make this change in COMSOL, the only thing we have to do is to take away the concentration condition to the right. We right-click on it and delete it. Yes, we're sure. Then we look at the no flux and we see that a no flux has been introduced to the right. We don't need to remesh it, so we just study, get a new concentration plot. Now we see that the concentration to the very right is something in the range of 3 rather than 0. And we go to our predefined flux plot. And we see that the flux to the left is about 24. And the flux to the right is, of course, 0, since it's a solid wall to the right. So now it's time to summarize the results. As we'll see, concentration of zero, the right-hand boundary, will give a higher flux into the slab, but the difference is not very large. So, now we've gone through example one, taken the steps in COMSOL, including the model width, the geometry, the transport of dilute species, the meshing, the studying, and the results. And finally, we looked at another example with a no-flux boundary to the right. Thank you very much.